Good afternoon. So, you know, your state port and of course added more in India through the year, uh, 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 finally getting rewarded. Uh, but what's the what's the outlook for Indian market as we start the next financial year? Do you get a sense that the, this recent outperformance that we have seen is going to continue? Yeah, I, I think clearly the markets have rallied, you know, quite quite strongly, uh, particularly when you're looking at it from dollar returns. India's been a massive outperformer because obviously we've seen strength in the rupee as well, which has certainly aided foreign investors um, getting a domestic equity market return plus a, a rupee return. So. I think the reality is over the last year and a half, India had underperformed. The, the, we would saw a lot of um, foreign money being pushed into other more commodity-related emerging markets. They did incredibly well over that period. And I think we're beginning to see a little bit of um, foreign attention shifting back to India again. I guess the only slight concern is people look at you know, headline valuations. You know, clearly, we're pushing up to the upper end of the range. Um, but you know, I guess that's something we can talk through. Okay, so foreign attention is shifting back to India. Jonathan, uh, good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I was just going through your recent, uh, you know, India Equities Opportunity Fund holdings. And within that, it seems like you've increased weightage in the technology sector. You already owned stocks like Infosys and HCL Tech, but now it looks like the weightage has gone up a tad bit. Um, are you still optimistic despite the headwinds that we've seen in this space? Yeah, I mean, we, we, if, if we're honest, we, we, we started to push up waiting to quite right um, after we saw the Cognizant, um, that Cognizant, that an activist investor had, had entered the register of Cognizant. Um, and then the company did respond with better cash management um, initiatives. Obviously, that's now spread to the Indian IT sector, you know, within India itself. Um, so that was one of the reasons, you know, we, we were looking for better, better cash management initiatives out of Indian IT stocks. But also the reality is, you know, if we are seeing this global you know, improvement in macro data, then certainly, um, certainly some of the businesses, that, that, you know, the, the headwinds that in the IT have been facing over the last few years, not a couple of quarters, um, certainly are sort of you know, pushing into more tailwinds. So I think the demand environment is improving, better cash management, and then thirdly, obviously from a valuation perspective, there was no doubt that some of the worries over the Trump policy, protectionism, et cetera, et cetera, were, to our mind, was, was, was priced into current share prices. Okay. But Jonathan, you know, you have a lot of exposure to NBFCs, uh, the, you know, the largest of them, of course, are HDFC. Uh, you know, a lot of people argue about valuations here. Uh, we've seen huge price move in most of these stocks. Even the other one that you hold, Capital First, has been a big money spinner. But... Uh, What's the story here for you? Why would you want to stay invested in a space like this, which is, uh, you know, on traditional valuation parameters, a bit expensive? Yeah, I, th I guess you can argue HTFC um, in, in various ways. That it depends on what you want to look at that particular counter from a valuation perspective. But from an opportunity perspective, there's no doubt that the push into more of the population getting pushed into the more of the financial or the, sorry, the, the real economy or the, or the formal economy, uh, the push of this government into various house, housing initiatives is, is, is something which we see as just adding to the overall medium to longer term story for non-bank financial companies that are focused on mortgages and the housing market. So I think there's a great long term or even medium term structural story around, around the spaces where these businesses, businesses operate. And um, to our mind, HDFC has been simply the most consistent performer over a long period of time and has scaled to, to be able to grasp this opportunity. So we're very comfortable to continue holding that stock. Obviously, more recently, that you know, they, they have started to realize some value in some of their other um, insurance ventures and stuff. So, you know, for, for us, it, it, it's, it's, it's a, just a core long-term holding with a phenomenal management company that, that's produced incredibly consistent returns. The likes of Capital First are obviously a, a much more recent entrant and, and, and a su somewhat more diverse um, play. Clearly, a lot of those stocks we were adding actually to Capital First in, in the midst of the demonetization sell-off. And yeah, looking back, I wish we'd been a bit more aggressive because you know the stock has clearly uh, done very well since then.
Uh, well, returns is something that you've seen in a whole host of stocks that you've invested in, Jonathan. Uh, the other one being uh, the latest IPO. I mean, not latest, but the one that came in the auto space endurance technology. Mm. Uh, since you invested in that, the stock went from 500, now sitting at almost 800 rupees. Uh, wanted to get a sense, are you looking at any more of these mid-cap or small-cap stocks? Have you added anything in your portfolio where you see more upsides? Yeah, so, I mean, endurance is an interesting one. We were almost hoping that the stock might have come off a bit uh, with the news from the Supreme Court, although obviously Bajaj um, has, has come through that fairly well. Um, you know, clearly there will be an impact on, on the likes of endurance, but it's a unique stock um, from an Indian market perspective and, and, you know, very well managed, so we're, we're comfortable to continue holding that one. Um, the only addition we've had in the portfolio more recently has been KPR Mills. Obviously, it's, it's in a relatively small position for us. Um, but that's, yeah, that's, we're still very much active and looking in the mid to small cap space for new names um, at all times because I think there are so many interesting, well managed um, companies that, 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 that are you know, currently in the mid and small cap range, which most attractive foreign investors don't bother looking at um, and that, those are the, the, the names which, which we find particularly attractive okay uh, that's kpr mills uh, that uh, jonathan referred to for in the mid cap space uh, uh, jonathan attempted to ask you uh, did you uh, look at dmart as a story because we had a huge listing of course uh, uh, and uh, are you looking at it right now yeah so we certainly looked at uh, dmart and you know we've been reviewing the retail sector for some time we just haven't pulled the trigger um obviously from our side allocations when you get a you know ipo that's that, that oversubscribed it was always going to be tough clearly the stock has raced up to quite frankly a very eye-watering valuation um sure if it suffered a significant sell-off we, we'd certainly be looking at it i think it's a very robust business model and clearly a very successful business um, there are, I guess, threats through e-commerce on the horizon for, for companies like that. But when you get such a driven management team with such a focus on what they do and they do it incredibly well, it's understandable why a business like that has done so well for, you know, since listing. But just at the moment, from a valuation perspective, we're, we're happy just to sit back for the time being. Okay, the other stock that you just spoke about was KPR Mills. Uh, I was just going through the uh, history of that stock. The last 12 months have been all right for the stock. You know, it's been really choppy, but it still has seen good return gone from a, about 400, oh yes, 400 to 640. So that's been a big up move in uh, KPR Mills. Um, is it still worth a lot more? I mean, is there still value in uh, spaces like this? Well, when we, when we look at stock, we try and not worry about the next six months to even, you know, 12 months. We, we genuinely take a sort of three, five, if not longer, year view on, on ownership. And when we see what this business is doing in the governmenting side, um, when we see the governance and the, you know, the whole sort of ESG mentality of the promoters, it, it's a stock that we, we think um, we're happy to be aligned with, it, with the owners of that business. And I think, interestingly enough, the whole textile space garmenting is clearly a space of focus for the government. Obviously, this is an area which, you know, India, with, with, with the breakdown of TPP, where India can, you know, take global market share from some of the other players um, globally. And clearly, from an employment perspective, the garmenting and the whole textile space is, is an area which, which can suck up huge numbers of, um, of, of low-skilled uh, employees. Jonathan, thanks a lot uh, for joining us uh, and uh, wish you luck for next financial year. Uh, you have stayed invested in India, of course, uh, and uh, your portfolio has done well for your investors. <laughs> thanks a lot.